If you have a persistent red rash around your mouth, it could be perioral dermatitis. So today I'm going to talk about what perioral dermatitis is, what causes it, and some great treatment options. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis. I'm a board certified medical and cosmetic dermatologist in Northern California, and I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. A lot of times people wanna know what perioral dermatitis actually is. And if you break down the word, perioral, which means around the mouth, and dermatitis, which means inflammation of the skin, you get inflammation of the skin around the mouth, and that's how we classify it. The interesting thing about perioral dermatitis is that it can look like many different things. It can look like little red acne bumps, it can look like scaly skin, it can be sensitivity, and it doesn't just happen around the mouth. So even though perioral dermatitis is there, more broadly, we call this periorificial dermatitis, meaning dermatitis around the orifices of the face. So you can also get little red bumps or scaly spots around your nose, as well as around your eyes. I see this condition in my office and treat it all the time. And when I'm explaining it to patients, I describe it as if rosacea and eczema had a really bad baby. The reason perioral dermatitis can be so frustrating is it often shows up when we're in our young adult years, so often for women in their 20s and 30s, this will be the first time that they ever deal with this rash, although of course it can happen in kids and later in adulthood as well. It's also incredibly stubborn. So there are a lot of different things that trigger it, which we'll talk about in a second, but it also doesn't consistently respond to the same treatment, and so it can give a lot of people frustration when they're trying to get it under control. For many people, perioral dermatitis is going to have no associated symptoms, so you're not gonna notice itching or stinging with it, but in some cases, it can be symptomatic. The other thing is it's not contagious, so if you or a loved one have perioral dermatitis, you don't have to worry about passing it on. And the other important thing to note about perioral dermatitis is if you get it at one point in your life, you're likely to get it again. So it sort of has this, what we call relapsing and remitting course. And so once you find what works for your perioral dermatitis, it often will set you up for the future of what to do if it happens again. But that should be the expectation that if you have one bout of perioral dermatitis, it may come back in the future. Now, not every red rash that occurs around your mouth or nose or eyes is perioral dermatitis. There are plenty of mimickers and it can have overlapping features with other skin conditions, including acne, rosacea, seborrheic dermatitis, contact dermatitis, as well as infections that are viral, fungal, or bacterial in nature. So yes, herpes and other infections can look like perioral dermatitis. And that's one of the reasons why if you have a persistent facial rash, it's important to get evaluated by a dermatologist. So if you're pursuing treatment, you know that you're treating the right thing. Now, once people are diagnosed with perioral dermatitis, one of the biggest questions they have is, what caused this? And it's very normal to wonder if it's something you did or there's something that you could intervene upon to make it better. The tricky thing about counseling a patient on perioral dermatitis is we don't always know what causes it and it doesn't have a distinct identifiable trigger in every instance. But there are a few triggers that can be identified in some patients. So for example, steroid use, whether that's topical steroids or inhaled steroids. So people who suffer from asthma, and we often see this in little kids, are more prone to developing perioral and periorificial dermatitis. Even people who take an oral course of steroids for something completely unrelated can get this annoying facial rash afterward. Probably one of the more common instances I see is that someone starts with some type of irritation on their face, so they will use 1% over-the-counter hydrocortisone cream to fix it. And it will fix the rash that they're dealing with at that point in time. However, it can then trigger a bout of perioral dermatitis that can be much more stubborn than the original thing they were treating. The other thing that's tricky about topical hydrocortisone is that it's often given as a treatment for rashes around the mouth in general, and it actually works really well for perioral dermatitis temporarily. So what we often see is this cycle where you apply hydrocortisone or some type of topical steroid to the perioral dermatitis, it temporarily gets better, and then you get this rebound flare, and people get trapped in that. Fluoride is also another common trigger for perioral dermatitis, and we don't fully understand why that is the case, but people get continuous fluoride exposure, particularly with some toothpastes. And we think that stannous fluoride is the main problem here, but also things that have SLS or sodium lauryl sulfate can also be problematic. So if you're using a toothpaste like Sensodyne or Pronamel, or even a prescription toothpaste from your dentist, it could be triggering perioral dermatitis. Fluoride can also be in certain mouthwashes, so it's good to check that if you're suffering from perioral dermatitis. While we're talking about toothpastes and mouthwash, minty flavors in general can be problematic. So things like chewing gum, breath mints, cinnamon flavored things, all potentially can trigger perioral dermatitis. It can also behave a little bit 
bit like rosacea, where exposure to harsh weather conditions, whether that's wind or a lot of sun, can make it worse, as well as things like harsh cleansers or even topical exfoliants or retinoids. It's also thought to have hormonal triggers in some individuals, so people may notice a cyclical change to their perioral dermatitis or have it flare with oral contraceptive use. And I want to be very clear here. These things are not bad. It's just if you have perioral dermatitis, then they might be a trigger for it. But it doesn't mean that you can't use fluoride toothpaste or can't use a birth control pill. But if you're struggling with perioral dermatitis, it may be an adjustment you need to make. And then lastly, and this is more of like a recent acknowledgement, is that chronic wearing of masks may exacerbate perioral dermatitis. And that is because you're sort of getting this like hot, steamy environment under your mask, and it may alter the microbiome and in turn induce this rash. And unfortunately, in the majority of cases of perioral dermatitis, we actually aren't able to find a specific trigger. And again, that's probably one of the things that makes it most frustrating aside from it having this sort of relapsing and remitting course. Now, once you have the diagnosis and maybe you have or have not identified your perioral dermatitis triggers, it's time to talk about treatment. And I bet that's what you're here for. First off, it's important to know that perioral dermatitis is benign or harmless, and it will often go away on its own over the course of a few months. But dealing with a facial rash for three months is so annoying. So it makes sense why you may want to intervene sooner than that. It's also important to note that perioral dermatitis can last longer than a few months, or you might see it show up and go away and show up and go away. And again, this sort of undulating course is really typical. I think it's always best to go to a dermatologist to get a formal diagnosis before you start treatment, but as a dermatologist, I know you can't always get an appointment right away. So what are some things you can do in the meantime? The first thing you can do is called a product holiday. I also call it a skin diet, which is essentially where we remove any non-essential skincare from your routine. And you might be looking at your skincare routine or your makeup routine going, these are all essential, but I promise you they're not. So this is going to sound really extreme, but ideally you would just be using a cleanser, no moisturizer, no sunscreen, just temporarily, uh, and really limiting any makeup application as well. And the reason for that is because there are so many potential triggers for perioral dermatitis, including a lot of ingredients in cosmetic products, we're trying to reduce your exposure and just limit the variables in the equation. But what I find is this is a pretty unrealistic ask. If you are social, if you have a career, it's very hard to not use skincare or makeup for a prolonged period of time. But if someone is really struggling with their perioral dermatitis and they wanna know my number one recommendation, it is to limit, limit, limit your product exposure just for the time being. Now, if you do want to incorporate a few things into your routine, which I totally understand why you would, I'll give you a couple that I really like. First up is a cleanser by the brand Clur. This is a very basic, gentle cleanser. Is it the best user experience? Is it the one I would pick if I wasn't struggling with perioral dermatitis? No, but I do think it is a really nice gentle cleanser that is unlikely to exacerbate the issue. Another one that you probably hear dermatologists recommend all the time is the Cetaphil Gentle Cleanser. Again, this isn't like a rich, lathery, super luxurious cleansing experience, but it gets the job done and is not likely to cause problems. And also, I just wanna remind you, if you're struggling with perioral dermatitis, this is a temporary thing. So sometimes you have to kind of change up your routine to get the results you want. And then it doesn't mean you can't go back to all of your favorite products. It just means we're taking a break temporarily. So even though for someone who has perioral dermatitis, I would prefer that they just use a cleanser and not apply a moisturizer as someone who also struggles with dry skin, that's not gonna be a realistic ask, at least for someone who has skin like mine. One moisturizer that I will often recommend to my patients who have perioral dermatitis who want to use a moisturizer is the CeraVe Moisturizing Lotion. Now, this is a pretty basic, gentle moisturizer, and it's fairly lightweight, and that's why I like it, because it's unlikely to exacerbate the perioral dermatitis, but it might not be your favorite moisturizer to use every day, all the time. But again, this is just while you're dealing with the perioral dermatitis, and eventually you may go back to other moisturizers that you prefer for one reason or another. So we're keeping the routine so simple. Cleanser, maybe moisturizer. We're skipping serums. We're skipping exfoliating acids. We're skipping retinoids. And sometimes we're skipping SPF, which is one thing I want to talk about. Sunscreens, even though as a dermatologist, this is almost like sacrilege to say, can exacerbate some people's perioral dermatitis. And so if someone is not getting tons and tons of sun exposure, I will have them take a sunscreen holiday while they're struggling with their skin condition. If someone's going to be getting a ton of sun exposure, sometimes our hands are tied and they do need to apply sunscreen, but I often encourage things like seeking shade and relying on sunglasses and wide brim hats for protection in those cases. You can even take it a step further and wear like a full face sun shield. I mean, I rock those and I don't have perioral dermatitis. Also because mint flavoring and fluoride can be common triggers for perioral dermatitis, I recommend recommend switching to a fluoride-free non-mint toothpaste. So for example, Tom's of Maine is probably my go-to. The brand Clure also makes a good fluoride-free toothpaste. Also get rid of chewing gum, mint lip balm, 
breath mints, breath strips, minty floss, you have to limit all your exposures. And then the last thing you're going to want to do is to stop any topical steroid exposure. So if you're using hydrocortisone on your face, even if it's intermittently, once every three weeks, you need to stop. And for some people, they may come into my office and they are really dependent on their topical steroid because anytime they stop it, they see that their perioral dermatitis gets worse. So oftentimes we will have to slowly wean someone off of it. We can't stop them cold turkey because their flare is too intense, but they may go down to using it three times a week, then two times a week, and then not at all. And then if there's anything in your diet where you feel like your perioral dermatitis is flared afterward, you can eliminate that. So whether that's eating salty or spicy foods, or there are certain food triggers that you've identified, it's okay to get rid of these, but I don't recommend any particular dietary restrictions unless you notice that's a trigger for you. So you've minimized your skincare routine, you've gotten rid of your potential triggers, what else can you do? And oftentimes that will involve a prescription medication given by a dermatologist. So let's talk about those. Probably the two most common topical treatments for perioral dermatitis are an antibiotic called metronidazole and an anti-inflammatory called pimecrolimus. One is not better than the other. They have different mechanisms of action and some people's perioral dermatitis will respond much better to one versus the other. Oftentimes, by the time someone reaches me, I might be their second or third opinion on their perioral dermatitis. And often they've tried metronidazole because that is typically the go-to. It's also much easier to get metronidazole approved by insurance. And in general, it's a cheaper drug, but I prefer pimecrolimus and in my hands, I see better success with that particular medication. Now let's talk about how to use these medications. Of course, if you're being seen by a dermatologist or other healthcare provider, I really encourage you to follow the instructions they provide, but this is how I counsel my patients. Typically with these topical medications for pomecrolimus, in conjunction with the minimal skincare routine and the trigger avoidance, I will have them use it topically twice a day until they are completely clear. For some people that'll take a week, some people two weeks, for some people a few months. The good thing about these topical medications is they're very safe for long-term use, so you don't have to worry about long-term complications. Once someone is completely clear on twice a day use, we will wean them down to once a day. So even if they're totally clear, I will still have them use their product once a day for somewhere between two and four weeks. Usually we're doing follow-up in the office around this time so we can kind of touch base and see what seems realistic for them. Once they've weaned down to once a day and we're not seeing any breakthrough perioral dermatitis, we can start going down to four days a week, then three days a week, then two days a week, then once a week. And we usually do that once a week, we reduce it by one day per week. So it can take a few months to completely wean off your medication and that's okay. Now these are medications that can technically be stopped cold turkey. You don't have to wean down on them. But what we found is when you don't wean off of them, you're much more likely to experience a rebound flare. A lot of times patients will ask me, well, Dr. Ellis, how long am I gonna be dealing with this perioral dermatitis? And of course, everyone is different, but we estimate that for about however long you've been struggling with this. So if you've had it for three months, it will take at least three months to get it to be better. If you've been struggling for six months, we're looking at a six month treatment journey. If someone is not responding to topical medications or is responding suboptimally, then we move on to oral antibiotics. Oral antibiotics are commonly given for perioral dermatitis. We use them all the time for the treatment of acne and rosacea, but of course we want to be judicious about their use and not use them excessively. But for some perioral dermatitis, it's the only thing that's going to clear them. And usually we do about a two month course of oral antibiotics for that. For most adults, we'll start by treating them with oral doxycycline twice a day, but if they can't tolerate doxycycline or have an allergy to it, we usually use azithromycin. The other thing is a patient can have some overlapping features of perioral dermatitis with a chronic yeast infection. So in certain cases, I may opt to treat them with a topical or an oral antifungal as well. And then, like I mentioned, you have to be a bit patient with perioral dermatitis. The goal is to find some treatment that works for you and clears you. It may not clear you forever because perioral dermatitis likes to come back, but at least if we have something that we know you respond to, we have a plan for the next time it develops. So let's say you've done your treatments for perioral dermatitis, everything is clear, now what do you do? So usually once my patients are clear from their perioral dermatitis, they've sort of weaned off their medications, then we talk about adding things back into their routine. So if they really miss their fluoride toothpaste, we start with that and they bring that into their routine for a couple of weeks. And if they have no issues, then we bring back the next thing and the next thing. And eventually we get them back to their original routine. And if there's anything that they add in that triggers their perioral dermatitis, then we know for the future. So if you have perioral dermatitis or have struggled with it in the past, I hope this video was helpful for you. I'd love to hear about your experience in the comments below. So fill me in. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.